what we do is we learn how to derive the great orthogonality theorem and there also I leave something for you to uh, figure out. See we have used great orthogonality theorem for at least 50 percent of our course right. But the reason why we did so much of matrix algebra at the beginning was to do what we do today. We just do not want to use great orthogonality theorem like a black box. We also want to know where it came from. As, as we will see today it actually came from a very basic matrix algebra. And a lot of manipulation is there, but then you people are masters of manipulation anyway. You know very well when you have to have to multiply it by something, then take inverse that it becomes C and all that. I think you uh, would be much more comfortable with this than I am at this stage. So, before getting on to uh, great orthogonality theorem, the actual part of it, we need to go through what are called the Schur's lemmas. Schur is the name of a mathematician. What is a lemma? What is that? Does it have a proof? No. no. That is an axiom, yes. Lemma can be proved, as you will see. We are going to prove them. So, did you follow this uh, Mangalyan thingy, the Mars mission? So, in Mars mission or any such space mission, they have a big rocket, right? And along with that, they also have some subsidiary rockets, booster rocket and all that, right? So, lemmas are to theorem what booster, the, the subsidiary rockets are to the main rocket. So, lemmas are small theorems that we need to prove not because they themselves give us some uh, very great intuition, but because they help you solve a bigger theorem. Okay. So, they are something that come in the way. Actually, it must have been the other way. Somebody tried to work out great orthogonality theorem, got stuck. So, then uh, you know took a break, worked this out and then went back. In our case, since we have the benefit of hindsight, we are going to work out the lemmas and then get on to uh, great orthogonality theorem. Okay. And they, if you just look at them, they seem kind of innocuous to start with. So, there are two such theorems. Theorem number one is this and once again, please do not memorize anything. Just try to follow. I am going to ask questions where if you have followed what we have done here, you will be able to work out. There is no need to memorize each and every step. When I was an MSc student, the guy sitting next to me in an exam started poking me during the exam. He says, I know everything, just tell me where to begin. <laughs> so, he has memorized the entire <laughs> notes of the year, he just does not know where to start. So, when, once he starts, he can go on and on and on. So, <laughs> do not do that, it does not make sense. Okay. So, this is what theorem 1 is. So, suppose we are working with an irreducible representation. So, in irreducible representation what do you have? You have matrices like this. By the way, I have gone back to uh, Bishop's book, okay? Bishop's book. What is dr? Yes? Yeah, but what kind of matrix? What is r? The transformation matrix dr is a transformation matrix corresponding to the symmetry operation r. So, what we are saying here is if in some ir we have a matrix which commutes with dr, what is the meaning of commutation? Uh, commutation? Yes. So, suppose we have a b dr equal to dr a, now where did b come from? a dr equal to dr a for each and every symmetry operation R. 
is a matrix. Let us say A is a matrix which commutes with the transformation matrices of a particular irreducible representation all the transformation matrices then we are going to prove that this A is lambda into E. What is E? Eigenvalue identity matrix and lambda multiplied by E what kind of a matrix is that? Diagonal, but it has another uh, even among diagonal uh, matrices, this is a special kind of matrix. Lambda multiplied by E. What is this matrix called? What will be the value? All the diagonal elements are lambda, isn't it? It is called a constant, constant matrix, constant matrix. Okay. So, Dola, while you are not there, we have changed the date of the exam. It is going to be on a Sunday, 16th. Okay. Right? It is a constant matrix. right? So, what we are saying is that in an irreducible representation if there is a matrix that commutes with each and every transformation matrix of that representation then it has to be a constant matrix. That is what we are going to prove. Why are we going to prove here prove this? Because it turns out to be handy later on when we try to prove great orthogonality theorem. But is the theorem clear to all of us? This is what we need to understand. If A D R equal to D R A in an I R, then A equal to lambda E. That is what we want to prove. All right. I have created some degeneracy. Hmm. Okay, let us see. How do we go ahead? We go ahead by doing a similarity transformation. We want to simplify the problem. Okay? And what we do is we say let Z be X inverse A X and let this Z be a diagonal matrix. Diagonalization is usually the first step of any problem that has got to do with matrices because the moment you diagonalize life becomes much simpler. Right? Of course, here it is apparently if you go look at the theorem we believe that this matrix is diagonal already. Right? Constant matrix is lambda into E. So, in any case we believe that it is diagonal but there is no harm in doing a similarity transformation on that also. Suppose we take E and do a similarity transformation, what do we get? We, we discussed this long ago when we were talking about group theory. We get back E, is not it? So, similarly, you take a diagonal matrix, do a similarity transformation, there is no issue. Okay. But now, suppose I perform the same similarity transformation on the transformation matrices. D dash R equal to x inverse dr x. Okay. Should this cause diagonalization? I am using the same matrix x or even if I do not write the first line. What I am saying is d dash r equal to x inverse dr x and dr are the transformation matrices in an irreducible representation. So, my question is should d dash r be a diagonal matrix or even a block diagonal matrix? d dash r should it be a diagonal matrix or a block diagonal matrix or none of the above? 
if dr represents the symmetry operation the uh, transformation matrix corresponding to symmetry operation of r in an irreducible representation it cannot be diagonal or block diagonal why because see that's what the way you are saying irreducible representation all the time if dr is the matrix corresponding to an irreducible representation then you cannot diagonalize it further isn't it it is as good as it gets understand what i'm saying it cannot so d dash r cannot be diagonal or block diagonal because you have already reached the smallest unit in dr itself don't forget dr are the matrices in a uh, an irreducible representation you should not be able to reduce it any further is that point clear now that is what we are going to need a little while later all right agreed fine let's get ahead next is very simple okay what did i say i said that a and dr commute with each other let us see if z and d dash r will also commute with each other okay let's see z d dash r minus d dash r z is equal to what what is z x inverse a x isn't it so x inverse a x and what is uh, d dash r x inverse dr x minus x inverse dr x x inverse a x so we have reached something that is uh, very convenient why because here you are multiplying x with x inverse right so that becomes e so this becomes x inverse a dr x minus x inverse dr x dr a x so similarity transformation plus similarity transformation is equal to similarity transformation of the sum so i can write it like this x inverse a dr minus dr a x at this step are we uh, all okay achal yes sure uh, all you have to do is start from here and expand you see you will reach here okay now what is this a dr minus dra that is zero because a and dr uh, commute so if you take a similarity transformation of zero what do you get unless it is a creation operation it has to be zero there is nothing right and you create you act like brahma or god god said let there be light and there was light so unless you can play god you cannot take zero perform a similarity transformation and get something that is not zero okay so z d dash r minus d dash r z that is also equal to zero or in other words z and d dash r commute with each other all right what are we trying to prove we are trying to prove that a is a constant matrix we are not there yet but what we have done so far is that we have proven that the similarity transformations that we generated they are also uh, commuting with each other right so now what we will do is we are going to talk about symmetry uh, not symmetry sorry matrix elements 
So, it does not matter if you multiply z by d dash r or you multiply d dash r by z, you get a third matrix, right? The product. So, let us say I call it the product matrix P. By using the rules of multi matrix multiplication, can you tell me what will be the expression for P i j? The i j th element of matrix P, what will it be? A B. So, will you let me write it like this P i j is equal to it is z d dash star is not it z d dash star uh, and I want i here. So, will you let me write i p and then what will be uh, the matrix element of d dash star? Okay, let me write i k p i will use later i k and k j and then sum over what k 1 to n and that will be equal to if I write it the other way around I can write it the other way around also right. So, I can write d dashed i k r z k j sum over k equal to 1 to n. Are we all comfortable in writing matrix elements like this using the subscripts? Are we all okay with this? I am sorry. Yeah, it is quotes and symmetry after all, everything is symmetry. Is this right? Is this right? What do I do next? What do I do next? Do I know anything about one of these matrices Z or D that can help me with my problem? What is what do you know about Z? It is a diagonal matrix, right? Remember what we said? We had said that let z equal to x inverse a x be a diagonal matrix. So, given whatever matrix a I have, I am going to choose my x in such a way that z has to be a diagonal matrix, right. So, that is what is going to make my life a little easier because z is a diagonal matrix. And since z is a diagonal matrix, I can write that z i k is equal to 0 unless unless i equal to k. k equal to i is what I will write because k is the variable, right? i is a constant as far as this step is concerned. And z k j is also 0 unless k equal to j, right? right or wrong. So, you just put in these values then, then there is no summation, summation is gone right. If I work with one value of i then I might want to add over all i's that is a different issue. But for one value of i the summation signs are going to vanish and I will be left with z i i d dashed i j r is equal to d dashed i j r z j j right and see the magic has happened already because what has happened is on the left hand side you have 
d dash ij on right hand side also you have d dash ij is not it. But on the left hand side you have z i i on the right hand side you have z j j right. So, let me collect all the terms on the left hand side I have i j th element of d dash r multiplied by z i i minus z j j equal to 1 right. 1 or 0? Sure? Okay, I believe you. Now, can this be equal to 0? Why not? What is the meaning general element? Yeah, but then uh, it may not be equal to 0 when i equal to j. But a better agreement, a better argument is that how did we generate this d dash matrix by a similarity transformation of dr, right? Now, dr belongs to uh, irreducible representation, and a similarity transformation takes you from one representation to another equivalent representation. So, you will get another uh, irreducible representation, it will never make it reducible, right? And as we discussed at the beginning of the class. Since it is uh, an irreducible representation, you cannot, this cannot have become uh, diagonalized all of a sudden, okay, fine. So, this is not 0, you cannot say that this is always 0. So, then all we are left with is z i i equal to z j j What does that mean? All the diagonal elements are the same i goes from 1 to n, j also goes from n to n, uh, 1 to n, right. All these are equal to each other or in other words, a equal to lambda into e, that is what we wanted to prove. All the diagonal elements are the same and in any case, we have performed a similarity transformation that has diagonalized the matrix. Actually, z equal to lambda u is what comes out, right? But then from there, it is not very difficult to go to a equal to lambda u. 